This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 338, Myth-Busting Online Dating, by Dr. Gwendolyn Seidman with Lovesy.com, and I'm your personal narrator, Joss Marie. Welcome back, and thanks so much for joining me here. I'll be covering a post today from guest author Dr. Gwendolyn Seidman with Lovesy.com, and I've actually covered Dr. Seidman's content a few times here on the show, and as always, it's a pleasure. And just a little side note also for you before we get into today's post, Science of Relationships is actually recently rebranded to lovesy.com, so I just wanted to let you know. But with that, let's keep this intro short and sweet and get right to optimizing your life. Myth-Busting Online Dating by Dr. Gwendolyn Seidman with lovesy.com Online dating is increasingly popular, and yet misinformation about the industry abounds. Let's examine four common myths and why they're wrong. Number one, everyone is lying. There is a widespread belief that dating sites are filled with dishonest people trying to take advantage of earnest, unsuspecting singles. Research does show that a little exaggeration in online dating profiles is common, but it's common in offline dating as well. Whether online or off, people are more likely to lie in a dating context than in other social situations. As I detailed in an earlier post, the most common lies told by online daters concern age and physical appearance. Gross misrepresentations about education or relationship status are rare, in part because people realize that once they meet someone in person and begin to develop a relationship, serious lies are highly likely to be revealed. Number two, online dating is for the desperate. There is, surprisingly, still some stigma attached to online dating, despite its general popularity. Many people continue to see it as a last refuge for desperate people who can't get a date in real life. Many couples that meet online are aware of this stigma, and if they enter into a serious relationship, may create false cover stories about how they met. This choice may play a role in perpetuating this myth, because many happy and successful couples that met online don't share that information with others. And in fact, research suggests that there are no significant personality differences between online and offline daters. There is some evidence that online daters are more sensitive to interpersonal rejection, but even these findings have been mixed. As far as the demographic characteristics of online daters, a large survey using a nationally representative sample of recently married adults found that compared to those who met their spouses offline, Those who met online were more likely to be working, Hispanic, or of a higher socioeconomic status. Not exactly a demographic portrait of desperate losers. Number three, online relationships are doomed. A common belief is that love found online can't last. Because online dating hasn't been around that long, it's hard to fully assess the long-term success of relationships that began on the internet. But two surveys have attempted to do so. In a study commissioned by dating site eHarmony, Cachopo and colleagues surveyed a nationally representative sample of 19,131 American adults who were married between 2005 and 2012. Over one-third of those marriages began with an online meeting, and about half of those occurred via a dating website. How successful were those marriages? Couples that met online were significantly less likely to get divorced or separated than those who met offline with 5.96% of online couples and 7.67% of offline couples ending their relationships. Of those who were still married, the couples that met online reported greater marital satisfaction than those who met offline. These results remain statistically significant, even after controlling for a year of marriage, gender, age, ethnicity, income, education, religion, and employment status. However, Results of another highly publicized survey suggested that online relationships were less likely to morph into marriages and more likely to break up. This survey also used a nationally representative sample of American adults. Researchers polled individuals currently involved in romantic relationships, 2,643 of whom met offline and 280 of whom met online. How can we reconcile these seemingly conflicting results? First, The finding that couples that meet online are less likely to get married is based on an inaccurate interpretation of the data. The particular survey analyzed for that paper oversampled homosexual couples, who comprised 16% of the sample. The homosexual couples in the survey were more likely to have met online, and naturally, less likely to have gotten married, given that at least at the time that data were collected, they could not legally do so in most states. 
The data set used in that paper is publicly available, and my own reanalysis of it confirmed that if the analysis had controlled for sexual orientation, there would be no evidence that couples that met online were less likely to eventually marry. The statistics behind the finding that the couples that met online were more likely to break up do hold up to scrutiny. But these results are certainly not the last word given the small sample of only 280 couples that met online as compared to more than 6,000 in the study by Cachopo and colleagues. So, the findings on longevity are somewhat mixed, with the larger study suggesting that online couples are better off. Either way, hardly evidence that online relationships are doomed to failure. However, Couples that met online do report less support for their relationships from family and friends than those who met via their organic social network, a factor that can lead to relationship problems. But similarly discouraging measures of social support for relationships were also reported by couples that met at bars, suggesting that the key variable isn't so much where they met, but who introduced them and the extent to which their future significant others were already integrated into their existing social circles and are known by their friends and family prior to the start of the relationship. This creates a challenge for those who meet online, but there is some evidence that online couples may nonetheless be happier than their offline counterparts. And number four, matchmaking algorithms are better than searching on your own. Some online dating sites such as eHarmony use matchmaking algorithms in which users complete a battery of personality measures and are then matched with compatible mates. A review by Eli Finkel and colleagues found no compelling evidence that these algorithms do a better job of matching people than any other approach. According to Finkel, one of the main problems with the matchmaking algorithms is that they rely primarily on similarity. For example, both people are extroverts and complementary, for example, one person is dominant and the other is submissive, to match people. But research actually shows that personality trait compatibility does not play a major role in the eventual happiness of couples. What really matters are how the couple will grow and change over time, how they will deal with adversity and relationship conflicts, and the specific dynamics of their interactions with one another, none of which can be measured via personality tests. The popular dating site OkCupid matches daters based on similarity in their answers to various personality and lifestyle questions. In an experiment, the website misrepresented users' compatibility with one another, leading people to believe that others were either a 30, 60, or 90% match. Sometimes these displayed match numbers were accurate, other times they were not. For example, a 30% match was displayed as a 90% match. The results show that there was almost no difference in the likelihood of users contacting or continuing a conversation with a real 90% match or a 30% match dressed up to look like a 90% match. This data caused OkCupid co-founder Christian Rudder to conclude that the mere myth of compatibility works just as well as the truth. You just listened to the post titled, Mythbusting Online Dating by Dr. Gwendolyn Seidman with Lovesy.com. Thanks so much to Lovesy for letting us share Dr. Seidman's post with you today. I hope you found it insightful. But with that, I want to keep today's intros and outros nice and short for you, so let's go ahead and wrap it up. Thanks for listening, have a great rest of your day, and hopefully I'll see you again tomorrow with a post from No Sidebar, where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.